In this lesson, we want to review the imaginary unit i. In elementary algebra courses, we typically don't deal with the square root of a negative number. If we see something like the square root of negative 25, we know that using the real number system, we can't get a solution, right? So a lot of times we would see this and we would stop and say no real number or no real solution or something like that. But as we progress through algebra, we learn that there is a way to kind of deal with this scenario. So the problem lies in the fact that we cannot square a real number and get a negative. If I take something like x, and this can be any real number, and I square it, the result is always greater than or equal to zero, okay, for any real number. If I square zero, I get zero. If I square a negative, I get a positive. If I square a positive, I get a positive. Okay, so it's not possible to square a real number and get a negative. So in order to kind of progress and deal with this scenario where we're taking the square root of something like negative 25, we introduce the imaginary unit i. So the definition of i is usually given as i squared is equal to negative 1. So this is now a number that when squared gives us a negative and specifically a negative 1. Okay, you may also see that i is defined to be equal as the square root of negative 1. And this just comes from taking the square root of both sides here, right? If I took the square root of this side, I'd have just i. If I took the square root of this side, I'd have the square root of negative 1. So using this definition, and specifically we're going to focus on this one right here, we can rewrite the square root of negative 25 Using the product rule for radicals, we'll say this is the square root of negative 1 multiplied by the square root of 25. We know the square root of negative 1 is defined right here to be i, okay, this imaginary unit. So I'm just going to replace that with an i. So I will have i times the square root of 25. We know the square root of 25, or at least the principal square root of 25 is 5. So I'm going to say this is 5 times i. Okay, so in this particular case, by using an imaginary unit i, I'm able to kind of push past my restrictions with real numbers and get a solution. Okay, so the square root of negative 25, we simplified that to 5i. So in general, we can use this rule here. We have the square root of negative a, and we say this is equal to i, okay, the imaginary unit, times the square root of a. All we're doing here, we're first assuming that a is a positive real number, and we're saying the square root of negative a is equal to the square root of negative 1, right, I'm just dealing with this negative right here, times the square root of a, so this is equal to, this by definition is i, so I put the i here, and then times the square root of a. Now, you typically see the i written in front of the square root symbol. Why is that the case? Well, a lot of times, if you put it like this, and you say the square root of a, and then multiplied by i like that, you might make a mistake and then extend the radical a little too far. It may be confusing in terms of where it is. So to clarify things, we just put the i out in front. Okay, so that's why you see that. But it is not incorrect to do the square root of a times i like that. But you will not typically see that. All right, let's start out with the square root of negative 100. So kind of the long way to do this is to break it up, again, using the product rule for radicals. I can say this is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 100. Again, we know by definition that the square root of negative 1 is i. So I'm going to replace that with just i and then times the square root of 100. The square root of 100, or at least, again, the principal square root of 100 is 10. So I can say this is i times 10 or 10i, and that's simplified. Now, how can I speed up this process? So let's say that I saw the square root of negative 100. We know that this negative here is basically negative 1. So if I have the square root of negative 1, I know I can pull that out and say that's i. So anytime you see a negative involved and it's underneath a square root symbol, just go ahead and pull that part out and say, okay, this is i times, this number here is 100, so i times the square root of 100. And then I'll go ahead and just say this is i times 10 or 10i, okay? You don't need to go through this long process each time. This is just to demonstrate where things are coming from. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have the negative square root of negative 64. 
So this negative out in front is just going to carry itself over here. Once we've done that, we don't need to worry about it anymore. This negative inside of the square root symbol is different, right? That is representing the square root of negative 1. We're going to replace that with just i. Now, I would think about this as times the square root of 64. Square root of 64 is just 8. So I can wrap up this problem and say that I have 8 times negative i or negative 8i as my simplified answer. What about something like the square root of negative 24? So again, the first thing I'm going to do is realize that I can pull that negative out, right? I can think about that as, again, the square root of negative 1, which is i, and then times the square root of 24. The square root of 24, you think about 24 as not being a perfect square, right? There's no rational number that you can square to get 24. But one of the factors of 24 is a perfect square, right? 24 is 4 times 6. 4 is a perfect square. So I can say this is i times the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. Square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is 2i times the square root of 6. All right, let's take a look at kind of a trap question that you're going to get. So suppose we had the square root of negative 9 times the square root of negative 16. What would you do to simplify this? Well, a lot of people would look at this and say, okay, I'm going to use my product rule for radicals. I'm going to have a square root, and I'm just going to take these radicands here, and I'm going to combine them under this square root symbol. So negative 9 times negative 16. We know negative 9 times negative 16 is 144, right? So this would be the square root of 144. And if we take the square root of 144, we end up with 12, okay? So you might put that down as your answer. But the problem is this is absolutely wrong, okay? This is wrong. The reason is, is that when we use the product rule for radicals with two negative radicands, it doesn't give us the correct answer, okay? So we can't use our product rule for radicals with two negative radicands. We can use it with two positive radicands. So if these were both positive, we could do this, right? This would be square root of 144, which would be 12, so that would be correct there. Or we could do it with one negative and one positive. Okay, so there can be alternating signs. It will work in that scenario. For this case, what I would end up doing is pulling the negative out of this part and saying I have an i times the square root of, you'd have 9 times 16, which is, again, 144. So this equals square root of 144 is 12, so this would be 12i. Okay, that would be the correct solution. That's fine. But again, if you use two negative radicands, you cannot use that rule. So what you need to do in this scenario is convert each of these first. So I'm going to pull the negative out of each part and say this is i times the square root of 9 times, you'll have i times the square root of 16. Once you've done that, then you can use your product rule for radicals. It's fine now because you have square root of 9, 9 is a positive number. You have square root of 16, 16 is a positive number. So there's nothing else that's stopping you there. So i times i is i squared. And then we know that the square root of 9 times the square root of 16, we could put the square root of 144. So this is going to equal i squared times the square root of 144 is 12. Now, most people will stop and write this as 12i squared. But we should know from the beginning of the lesson that i squared is defined to be equal to negative 1. So anywhere I see i squared, I can just replace it with negative 1. So if I had 12 times negative 1, this would be negative 12, okay? And that would be my answer. So notice how I got negative 12 here, whereas if I went with the product rule for radicals, I would have ended up with a positive 12, okay? So it's a very different answer in terms of the sign. So you've got to make sure that if you have two negative radicands, you simplify using this method, right? Pull the negative 1 out of each one of those guys, and then you can use the product rule for radicals. So let's look at another example. Suppose we had the square root of negative 6 times the square root of negative 5. Again, all I'm going to do, because I have two negative radicands here, I'm going to pull this out of each. So I'll have i times the square root of 6 multiplied by i times the square root of 5. So i times i, again, is i squared. And then times square root of 6 times square root of 5, really you can just write that as a square root of 30. We know that i squared is negative 1. So I can go ahead and say this is negative square root of 30. All right, let's look at another one. So we have the square root of negative 8 times the square root of negative 11 times the square root of negative 3. So again, to simplify this, I want to change 
I want to change each of these, okay? So I'm gonna have i times square root of eight times i times square root of 11 times i times square root of three. Okay, what's that gonna give me? Well, I know I can simplify the square root of eight. Eight is four times two, so I can say this is i times square root of four times square root of two times i times square root of 11 times i times square root of three, okay? So essentially we know at this point that the square root of four is two. So I'm gonna say I have two i times i times i is i cubed. And then you're gonna have square root of two times square root of 11 is square root of 22. Square root of 22 times square root of three is square root of 66. Now, I can simplify i cubed. And we'll talk more about this in another lesson. But essentially using my rules for exponents, i cubed is what? I can say this is i squared, which I know is negative one, times i to the first power, or just i. So I can replace this part right here with a negative one, and then say times i, which is just negative i. So I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna put the negative part of that out in front and just put an i right there. So this would simplify to negative two i times the square root of 66. So when we work with dividing radicals, we're gonna use the same process. If we have two negatives involved, we need to change each form first, okay? So the square root of negative 15, we're gonna write as i times the square root of 15. And then the square root of negative three, we're gonna write as i times the square root of three. And I can go ahead and simplify this further. Square root of 15 is what? It's the square root of five times the square root of three this is over the square root of three here. And then I've got i over i. Now, I know these are gonna cancel. i over i, doesn't matter that's an imaginary unit, same thing over itself. As long as it's not zero, that's allowed and it cancels to be one. Over here, square root of three over square root of three, again, same non-zero number over itself, that cancels and it's one. So here I'm just left with the square root of five. 